So here we have a map of Southeast DC from 2012 with locations of all the Capital Bike Shares at that time. And I've lived in a few different neighborhoods over here. But let me give you a history of the economic development in the past 20 years. A lot of the economic activity happened in Navy Yard at least 10, 15 years ago, mostly with the building of the of the, the ballpark for the Nats. And now we also have a soccer stadium that's in the region by Fort McNair. But a lot of development, a lot of the nice apartments all happened over here. And then slowly the development has been occurring across the river. Primarily, I think 11th Street Bridge is the first area. Right now there's um, the, the corner of Good Hope and MLK over here is going to be hopefully finished in a few in a year or two and uh, that's where the strip is that's where mama's pizza is that's where the bus boys is that's the uh, that's pretty much going to be where the strip is and the other bridge that is seeing more development or i believe we'll see a lot more development is the south cap bridge the frederick Douglass bridge right now it's really pretty and has a bunch of loops and the neighborhood known as berry farms which has a really rich history that uh has a had a sad turn with the crack epidemic in the 70s, is going to be really pretty with hundreds of new units uh, that should get built in the next few years, and we'll go tour the Berry Farms area later. Also, when it comes to the other bridges that cross the river, the Sousa Bridge, Pennsylvania Avenue Bridge, it is, in my personal opinion, isn't getting as much economic development as these other areas happen to be mostly because they're farther away from all the cool action on the other side of the river. And in my personal opinion, I don't think the East Cat Bridge is going to see a lot of big development in the next period of time. Another reason why I think we see a lot of good development here in these areas is the existence of the metro. We've got the Anacostia Metro here. There's not really a metro by the 11th Street Bridge, but the bus system's there. But they're just good transportation nodes, which are useful, so you can live in this area for a lot cheaper and still quickly get to your job in normal times on the hill or downtown. Also, some other areas to note, historically, St. Elizabeth's Hospital here has a wild history of America dealing with um, people who were deemed insane or mentally ill. The WNBA stadium is on the southern part of it, along with some of the hospital buildings which have been turned into condos. That's occurred in St. Elizabeth's. Also near St. Elizabeth's, um, kind of by the Congress Heights, there's a bunch of vacant apartment buildings down here, which uh, a former NFL player has been trying to buy. Uh, there's actually some people still living in some of the buildings, and they're, so he's trying to become the new owner, and hopefully fix up a lot of the vacant stuff over there. And also, if you read the papers, the place with the most senseless violence is in the neighborhood of Congress Heights by Savannah Street. That's a, a hot spot. Also, Berry Farms, historically, was a hot spot for crime on the crime map. And that's the quickie tour of Southeast D.C. So a lot of Anacostia, like DC, has row houses. And me personally, I think the ideal is sitting on your front porch. You can see your neighbors. And then some houses have the basement unit, which is ideal. I don't see if there's a basement unit here. Usually there's an entrance in the back. And what's even better than the row house is if you have a house that's detached, because then it's a little bit quieter. And you might have a front yard, backyard. But these are all factors that usually give give the price to be uh, to be what it is. This neighborhood's right next to Martin Luther King Jr. So you get your cool house in the neighborhood and if you want to go to some nice restaurant, you're not very far away. So, relatively new apartment, classic retail on the first floor, currently unavailable or currently not leased out, but units on the top. Whenever these are built, the city usually says you have to guarantee a certain percentage is going to go to low-income housing. And so everyone else will essentially, you know, pay for the difference. All the other, the neighbors will pay for the residences difference there. Okay, so a lot of times in the neighborhood, you'll see stickers on the wall that say 
that uh, the place is vacant. It's usually a green, a green poster. Or the DCRA enforcement team will come and they'll put their sign in the yard. But regularly, that, that well, that means the house is vacant, and some investors like to go figure out who the owner is and buy it and flip it and make it nice. A place that's vacant, if it's in the right neighborhood. Maybe it'll be available for like 100000 but also there's a lot of tax implications and things that have been built up. So whoever buys it might owe this district like tens of thousands of dollars in fees. So that's one thing that needs to be considered with uh, going into vacant properties. Great deals, but unless you got the team to help you clean it up and flip it, it could be a major risk. So right now we're at the historic Berry Farms. As you can see, there's a lot of construction happening, you can see the piles of dirt, you can see the Frederick Douglass, you now the Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge is through the trees, but yeah, the city council gave permission to a company, I believe last year, to start developing this area, and so in a few years, there'll be hundreds of housing units here, and it'll be not a construction zone or vacant properties, but it'll be new homes, new growth, and uh, new communities happening. So this is what Berry Farms looks like. Right now we're at the, the Goodman League. It didn't occur last year due to COVID, but as you can see, potentially very nice basketball court where ball usually happens. But uh, yeah, it's Berry Farms. The rec center is behind us. Super nice field and uh, I like to go swimming there. But yeah, this is Berry Farms. This place is, uh, this place is vacant, right? Oh yeah, it's been dead. Nothing is going on. And here we have some more apartments. This appears to be a four to eight units per building. It might involve section eight housing. Yeah, a lot of land there. Got the basement basement unit in this detached single bungalow. Pretty neat. Well, yeah, that house listed for sale. It's very know, skinny. It's got know, the. I don't know if you and I could lay down head to toe, head to toe. Yeah. That house. <laughs> it's not there. This is historic Anacostia. Frederick Douglass's home is nearby. This is historic home. Here there's some land for sale. Foundation's still there next to a house that's vacant with the boarded windows. This is the laundromat slash drug mat. Alright, yeah, we got a lot of people just chilling out. A lot of, a lot of action. Hanging out, a lot of action. Mm -hmm. A lot of action. Is that a kit? I don't know. Something. A lot of work there. Uh huh. Yeah. So these are usually two unit or four unit apartments. A lot of neighborhoods in Ward 8 have apartments that are Section 8 or HUD housing where a lot of people, the renters stay there and they're subsidized by local and federal governments to stay there. And sometimes uh, that can result in the neighborhood having neighbors who don't care very much about the properties. And uh, a thing you might need to know, uh, one thing that deters some investors are squatters. In DC, if you're in a property, you can, uh, you can stay there and It'll take the legal system at least a year to get you out of there because the DC really protects tenants' rights. Um, yeah, DC really protects the tenants. And uh, so I've heard some real estate agents tell their tell their kids like, hey, if you need a place to stay, go to DC, find a place, and they can't kick you out because you'll be protected by DC law. Um, otherwise, uh, that's about all I got.